Welcome to Sandy Parish Church once again on June the 7th, Trinity Sunday. This is part two of the sermon by the Reverend Hugh Davis. Thank you for joining me here at St. Swithin's in Sandy in Bedfordshire. On. And uh, today we're going to just spend the next 10 minutes or so uh, thinking about the character of God and who God might be. Last week we looked at uh, who the Holy Spirit was. This is uh, a little book. Gordon Fee has written this book. It's called The God's Empowering Presence, the title that we gave to last week's uh, talk, 900 pages of it. And uh, there are libraries full of books like this. Uh, and we tried to tackle the subject of the Holy Spirit last week in just 15 minutes. Well, this week we're going to do the same with the character of God and who God is. And look at Jesus' character, the way in which he dealt with people, the things he spoke, the things he said, the stories that we remember that have become part of our culture and part of the world's life. Look at the moral teaching of Jesus. Look not only at his character, at his teaching, at his works and the things that he did. Look at his resurrection. No one else in all of history is supposed to have come back from the dead apart from Jesus. He is utterly unique and he is worthy of listening to. For he said that I and the Father are one with no prevarication. He speaks to his disciples and says, follow me, for I am the way, the truth and the life. But how do we make sense of this idea of the Trinity? How do we make sense of Jesus being God and the Father being God? Jesus describing himself as the Son of God. How can he be God if the Father is God? Uh, I, for example, am a father. I have children. But as well as being a father, I am also a husband and I am also a son. Because I'm a son doesn't preclude me from being the father, nor does it preclude me from being a husband. Sometimes things need to be understood as pictures. When I send flowers, do you remember that little advert? A flower says more than a thousand words. When I send you flowers, do they say that I love you? Do they say thank you? Do they say I'm so sorry? The Bible gives us a complex of images of God. The Bible claims to be a revelation from God. How would I understand the God of the universe unless he were to reveal himself to me and to us? How could I It'd be like me trying to explain to an ant what it's like to fly in an aeroplane? The Bible is God's revelation to us of what he is like, an explanation, if you like, an illustration, if you will, a, a revelation describing and telling in stories and in parables, in pictures, revealing himself to us, written by 40 different authors over a period of 1500 years on three different continents in four different languages. God takes the theme of his love for his people and one great story in all those different 66 books, in all those years, in all those different stories, one great theme is the most amazing book in the world, describing God as creator, the Son as the image of the invisible God and the spirit of God's empowering presence with us. When I went to Sweden, I met some friends who persuaded me that they could walk on water. And they said that they would teach me the secret of walking on water. I was nervous, I can tell you. But after a little while of conversation, they persuaded me that it was perfectly safe and that I would be fine so long as I followed them. And so we went to the side of this lake and they stepped out onto the water. And as I watched them, I was sure that they were going to fall through, but they didn't. They began to walk out across the water and they said, come on, follow us, step where we're stepping. And so I did. I followed them and it became quite a, a thrilling thing to learn how to walk on water. I became very good at it. I'll show you one day if you like. And in fact, I could teach you how to walk on water. 
given the right circumstances. Once you know that it needs to be in a temperature of minus 27 and the snow needs to be three foot thick and the ice is 18 inches thick, we walked on water quite comfortably and quite confidently because water is not just liquid, it is also a solid in the right circumstances. In other circumstances, we're surrounded by water right now. I'm breathing water in. I can't breathe it in as a liquid, but I breathe it in as a gas. It's atmospheric water. This water that turns into steam powers all sorts of things. Solid, liquid, and gas. That's how water is. And in a way, that helps me to understand this picture of God as being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In a way, I think of the Father being like the solid ice, the Father figure, the Creator God. Jesus, the Son, who comes alongside us to live with us, to show us how to live, to teach us relationship, to speak to us more clearly than ever of who God is, so that there's no misunderstanding. God is not capricious. He is not prejudiced. He is not irrational. He is a God of grace and a God of love. And if you want to see what God is like, said Jesus, look at me. And then we see the Holy Spirit. Jesus saying, I will send you when I go. I will send you a paraclete and he will be like me. And he will show you. He will lead you into all truth. He will convict you of your sinfulness and he will show you how to put that right. He will give you the power and the strength and help you to worship and help you to pray. He will be God's empowering presence to you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so says Jesus, trust me, follow me, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. Does it matter whether I believe in God or not? I think it does. I think it makes me human. It gives structure to my spirituality. It helps me to understand who I am in the universe. It gives me comfort and peace and assurance that I'm not alone. It helps me to find a strength that is beyond myself, that higher power that speaks to those who are addicts, that higher power to whom presidents must one day bow the knee. It teaches me that there is no place for prejudice, that there is no place for racism, within the Christian faith. For we have one God, one Father. Our God is a God who's a God of love and a God of grace, a God of mercy and a God of power. Some who are listening to this talk will remember morning prayer in church. This is Psalm 95, one of the canticles. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. Come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers of old tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. And so the invitation today is to come to our God who calls us to his protection and to his peace, to find our purpose in him, our power in him, to live well, to live strong, to change the world and not to be molded by it. May God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you, granting you his peace. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Oh,